So hello and welcome everyone. My name is, is Glenn White, I'm one of the product managers here at Hawkridge Systems and today is part of our ongoing Wednesday webinar product education series. Every Wednesday we run two webinar sessions, one focused on demonstrating an area of the SolidWorks functionality you may not be aware of, second one offering tips and tricks around a certain portion of the SolidWorks software like this session is. So what I want to talk about today are a series of tools that are built into every license of SolidWorks. I'm going to focus on a couple of analysis tools primarily. So Simulation Express, Stress Analysis Tool, and Flow Express, a CFD tool. These tools are free limited versions of the full stress and flow analysis packages. They can complete certain tasks with certain limitations, um, but they do use the full analysis engine. So we'll look at what those limitations are, we'll look at what the features are, pros and cons of you know, what you can do in the limited express tool and what you can do in the full tool. Um, so where do you find these things? Well, in SolidWorks 2015, you look under Tools, Express Products, you'll see four of them there. DriveWorks Express uh, for Design Automation, DFM Express, Design for Manufacture, Simulation Express, and Flow Express. I'm going to talk about those last two primarily. Okay. In SolidWorks 2015, just so you're aware, we are asking for registration uh, the first time you try and use these tools in the 2015 interface. Okay, there's a little link when you try and launch it, you'll get a little link that pops up. Tools, Express products. I've never used DFM Express. You follow this link, gives you a code, enter it. And SolidWorks is just looking to understand how often these tools are used. So I can, can put more features into them or you know discontinue the ones that aren't getting activity. So that's the primary purpose behind that. So um, just be aware of that. Okay, but let's start off and talk about the Simulation Express tool. Simulation ex well, Simulation Express is one of the analysis tools, or Simulation in general is one of the analysis tools that are part of the SolidWorks family. We look at the five analysis technologies we have. Okay, we have stress analysis, SolidWorks simulation, FEA, stress, fatigue, frequency, all that sort of stuff. We have an express tool for that. Motion, kinematic motion simulation, while we don't have a specific express tool for it, uh, we do offer animation capabilities and physical dynamics capabilities that are pretty much like a light version of SolidWorks Motion. And they're in the every license of SolidWorks. SolidWorks Flow Simulation, a CFD package, we have an express tool for. SolidWorks Sustainability, we have an express tool for it. Life cycle assessment tool for figuring out the environmental impact of some of your design decisions. And the only one we don't have one for is um, SolidWorks Plastics, a new tool in the market uh, in the last couple of years. So let's talk about the stress analysis tool. Okay, so Simulation Express, the major limitation is sorry, let me just go back one. The major limitation is that we can only work on a single part at a time. Okay. No assemblies are available to be analyzed in the simulation package. Okay, we can assess loading due to a, any number of forces or pressures. And uh, we have some basic control over mesh, but no, no detail control. We have some limited stress displacement factor of safety slots. Um, but we can offer single factor optimization. And this all makes a lot more sense when we start looking at an example. Okay, so what I've got here is a, a knuckle from an automotive suspension. It's a single part file right now. Okay, so uh, 
good fit for Simulation Express. And in order to use Simulation Express, you have to have Solbook Simulation, the full tool, turned off. Now, that's not normally an issue. I will tell you that if you have access to the full tool of Solbook Simulation, you should never use Express. You can do the same analysis with much richer control. Okay, so we go to Tools, Express Products, Simulation Express, and that's going to launch a um, wizard-based interface for putting together a stress analysis on this part. Okay. Uh, we can have one analysis case per part. Okay, just, just one. We can not set up multiple cases. But the steps we go through are pretty straightforward. We first of all identify how the object is held. The only option we have here is to fully fix the holes. They have all three degrees of freedom removed. Okay, it's fully rigidly fixed. We so I picked that we hold fix at the two holes. Um, you know, in real life, we may want to control these to maybe not move off center, but be free to twist about the the pin that they're mounted to. So we don't have that level of control in the Express tool. We want to add loading, right? And we can add forces or pressures, so no torque, no remote loading, no self-weight due to gravity, no distributed masses, those sort of things. We add force, let's say there's some component that comes in and drives. On these, I can identify the direction that this pushes in, and that can be controlled by a plane that I built in the model. Okay. Give it a value. Get 5,000 newtons. Um, we can work in newtons or pounds at our, at our discretion. I'm going to push on that. And that is 5,000 newtons total distributed across the four holes. So 5,012.50 per. Um, okay, let's add a second load. I'm going to load this, this side fitting here again in a downward direction. So I'm going to pick a plane that is in that direction. Okay, we'll flip it around and we'll have 2,000 newtons there. Okay, so we can add multiple loads to the model, pressures as well, forces or pressures. The next thing we're going to that we're asked to review is the material that the object is made from. If we have specified a material in generating the part in SolidWorks that will be carried over, we do have the opportunity to, to change it. We wish to. Um, so pretty much anything in the database, you can add your own materials into a custom library if you wish to. Okay, the main things that are important from a material perspective, we're looking, we're doing a linear analysis. Okay, one fundamental limitation of the Express tool um, that we're doing a linear static analysis, um, and we're looking at the elastic modulus, the stiffness of the material, the Poisson's ratio, density, and for approximation of failure, we're looking at the yield strength. We get an opportunity here where it says change settings. Okay, what we're really doing in that scenario is changing the mesh density. It's really the only control we have. We can control the density of the mesh across the entire model. We can't do any local refinement. Um, and anyone who's done stress analysis knows that the quality of this mesh is probably the most important factor for the accuracy of your analysis. Unfortunately, we do not get any visual feedback about the mesh quality. It has meshed the part. I can't review it in this Express tool, and that, that can be a really a key limitation sometimes. Okay, the software makes a, an okay, a pretty solid um, first guess at what the mesh density should be. 
but if you have pots that have very thin components or it's sheet metal, you're going to really struggle to get a good mesh on those. Things like sheet metal and beam structural frames, we want to use tools like shell and beam mesh that are only available in the full tool. Okay, but from there we go ahead and run the simulation. It's going to run in a couple of seconds here, and the first piece of information we see is a visual representation of how the part is deforming. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, good that animation is coming over the web, but a little uh, animation here. What you're looking for here is, is it moving in the way I expect? That should be always your first question you ask when you do any analysis. Is this the behavior I'm expecting? Okay. So, um, from there, we can say, yes, this is, this is how we expect the part to deform. And from here, we can review a few different parameters. We can look at the von Mises stress. Okay. So my stress in megapascals, and I don't really have much control over how to view this, tops out at about 213 megapascals. The yield stress for the material is about 241. Okay, so that's interesting. We can look at the displacement, how far it's moving, about 0.2 millimeters. Again, a little bit of control over these units that I can put in place. And then I can review information about the factor of safety. It's showing me right now areas where I'd be experiencing yield, where the factor of safety is lower than one. You can change that to areas where the factor of safety is lower than two. And we can see that they are isolated around the holes. All right, so if I'm designing to a factor of safety of two, maybe this is where I want to look. Okay. This is exportable to a Word report, which will capture some visual outputs. It'll capture the inputs to the analysis, or an e-drawings file that captures visual information about the analysis. It can be shared in 3D format with anyone with a computer. Okay, but the last thing here that we have control over is the ability to do a single factor optimization. In Solibux Simulation Professional, we have multi-factor optimization tool. So what we're able to do here is to pick a dimension. Let's see if I can find something relevant. Like, for example, the thickness of this component. I could grab, grab a dimension, right? And then I can edit the range with which I can vary that dimension and a constraint. And this allows me to, for example, I can say vary this thickness between certain values, and I'd like to run an optimization. And it will vary that thickness while trying to keep my factor of safety below a certain target or above a certain target and present me the lightest solution that meets that design goal. So only one variable at a time that is a complete optimization routine. Like I say, we can have one of these scenarios per part. We can go back and dig into any of these you know, things that we've defined. We have full editability of everything we've created. We can go back to the run phase and run the analysis with a with a bigger load, for example. Okay. So pretty flex. Well, it's a simple part-only analysis tool. What if? We would do that same thing in the full analysis tool. All right, what, what would that look like? What's different? What's the same? So there are three levels of, of analysis tools above 
tools that are available for SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS Simulation Standard, there's also some of this capability that's in the SOLIDWORKS Premium CAD package, allows you to do static stress analysis on parts or assemblies, as well as motion. Um, Simulation Professional offers some other modes of failure, as well as our optimization tool. And in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium, we're getting up into our nonlinear and dynamic analysis. Okay, so oh, sorry, thank you. Let's look at that same analysis approach in in the full tool. First of all, if you have done or you passed a file that someone else has done an express tool analysis on, as soon as you turn on SOLIDWORKS Simulation, tell me I need to close the. Right, as soon as I turn on SOLIDWORKS Simulation, the express setting study I set up exists, but I now have full editability to add other stuff to it. But let's start from scratch just to kind of show the complete process. The steps, the phases are the same. We just have more choices available to us. So in terms of material, right, I'm still doing a linear static stress analysis. I'm not getting into nonlinear materials or anything like that. But I have the ability to, well, to use the same material, right? Nothing's really different there. One thing that is key is that I can use beam or shell mesh in order to in order to analyze the stuff. Okay. So if it's thin walled, shells might be more appropriate. Um, just more options there. Uh, I have a connections folder which lets me inter control the interaction between parts in an assembly. In this uh, situation, you know it's just a single part so that's not really relevant, but there's tools there where I can approximate virtual bolts, springs, bearings, etc. Okay. When it comes to fixtures, I'm not just committed to fixed geometry. For example, that might be more realistic to say these are a fixed hinge. Right? The position is locked, but they they are free to twist. Maybe it's pinned to the secondary part. Right? See how that affects the stress pattern. Um, I can apply my loads. Right, I've got forces and pressures as before, but I've got many other options. Changes in temperature to capture thermal expansion and contraction. Remote loads and distributed masses to capture parts that I don't want to model explicitly. Torque, I can 